I gotta ask. I have two mics right now. Is this is this one, oh. something special? Oh, okay. Good morning, everybody. Let's make it awkward for a second. I just had to ask those questions. Hey, I'm excited to be here. Uh, it's a room full, full of beautiful people. Um, I'm speaking and we talk about creators being in a room and everybody, y'all are well-dressed. Everybody's smiling for the most part. Y'all got B-caffeinated coffee. Shout out to B-caffeinated. Uh, they host a lot of runs that I don't get to make it to, but I also follow them as well, too. Um, so y'all check out B-caffeinated. So let me get set up here. I'm going to lose the keyboard for a second. Y'all don't have to be quiet right now. I'm just trying to get set up, you know. So Chris, thank you again, Chris, Asia, Cody, for giving me the opportunity to speak on movement. And uh, for the past few weeks, I've been trying to figure out what that looks like, right? Uh, trying to put it together. How does that apply to my lifestyle, to my story? Outside of running marathons, I've ran one, all right? So uh, if you guys want to join me, we are running some more this year. But um, is, is my picture up yet? There we go. Uh, so what greater way can I talk about movement if I don't talk about my journey to even while I'm standing right here? Um, the guy on the left, his name is Ian, and the guy on the right is, is Sully. Uh, who, who in the room has an alter ego? I believe we all do. All right. Uh, so I tell this story. It's kind of funny. As I, as I was losing weight, I was really finding myself and, and, and going through different changes and, and becoming a better person, better human. Um, I took my wife. We went to Atlanta for a weekend. I can't remember what we were celebrating. Uh, this is when crab, like the crab rolls, they got all crazy. Who loves crab rolls? Shame on y'all, I'm a vegetarian. Put your hands down. <laughs> but we went to a Jamaican shack in College Park, Atlanta. Everybody's probably familiar with that area. And um, I said, I know he's not going to be able to say Ian when he calls my order out just because of his, his dialect and how he was messing up everybody else's name. Uh, so I looked at my wife, it's probably like 2018, 2017, 2018, I said, when I get up there, I'm going to tell him that my name is Sully. And she's like, okay, whatever. You, you just want to cause problems. So <laughs> I get to the register. We order whatever crab she wanted. Uh, I can't even remember what I got because I don't even eat seafood. And uh, he was like, can I get a, get a name? I'm not going to try to ask him. But I'm like, he was like, can I get a name? And I was like, Sully. He was like, okay, Sully, gotcha. Wait on your order. And it just felt good coming off my tongue to say Sully. And then I started to look back and see why Sully, right? Obviously, my last name is Sullivan. I don't fly planes like Captain Sullivan, you know. Um, but Sully is who I became through movement, right? Um, let's go back to 2016. It was 2015. Um, I was about 320 pounds, so the guy on the, guy on the left, um, working, 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 trying to figure it out. Uh, just well, three, two or three years married, first child, second child on the way. Um, and I got some interesting news uh, that I was pre-diabetic in that moment. Um, anybody that so Raven fans back in the day, Disney? Yeah, okay. So Raven Simone would have visions of the future and she could predict it to try to prevent certain things from happening. So I get the call, I'm working, I got a line full of people working a job that I thought was gonna be probably a forever job, but probably the most unhealthy job I had. And um, I get the call and the doctor said, hey, you gotta come back in, you're pre-diabetic. And I, I just saw the vision of me at 25, not even making it, right? Overweight, depressed, stressed. Every odd was stacked against me, right? I'm going to lose my family. Like, this can't be healthy, right? Um, so I was like, all right, we got to figure it out. I'm going to go to the doctor, hear what she had to say. We set a goal to lose 20 pounds in like 90 days. Um, I failed. Anybody failed in life before? Anybody had 90 days to fail before? I've done it multiple times. So I failed, right? And ultimately, as a man, I didn't show up to my doctor's appointment because I didn't feel like I did what I needed to do. Um, I ended up losing that job, right? And I was trying to force my family. We were trying to move to Nashville. It just didn't work out. Ended up losing that job. So this is part of movement, right? This is what moved me to become who I am today. Um, I had a complex that I am the greatest customer service advocate in the world. Anybody work in customer service outside of being a creative? All right. I can sell anything and I can sell coffee to be caffeinated and sell their own coffee right back to them. Uh, and, I, and I had pride in that. So I had interviews at the interviews uh, and I didn't get the call. The one job that I ended up getting was at a plant in at Volkswagen. Right. Everybody seems excited to work at Volkswagen. So I'm like, let's do it. Third shift. Never worked third shift. Never worked in a plant. But I wasn't afraid of it. Um, 
that time that I was there, it forced me to really, really think because I was surrounded by people that didn't have any attitude to move, right? They showed up every day as if this was their only hope, which nothing's wrong with it. Um, but again, Raven Simone, I had a vision that this was only temporary. And I told myself, temporary, temporary, temporary. And I started losing weight. So it was like 300 pounds, 260. But I was doing it the wrong way, right? I was just starving myself. Uh, I, I looked good, but I was very malnourished. So fast forward, 2016, I got the call from Cigna. Uh, and it was like, all right, here we go. This is our opportunity. And I, and I want to answer this question early because I know it's coming. Like, why oatmeal, right? So I was sharing with Jackson earlier. Once I got the Cigna, I was rebuilding everything, financially, rebuilding family, rebuilding home, things of that nature. Uh, so going to Chick-fil-A or Starbucks wasn't in the equation at all. So the cheapest thing that I could find at Walmart was an eight pack of Quaker maple, was that maple syrup oatmeal? Every morning religiously, 60 seconds, 60 seconds, 60 seconds, 60 seconds, 60 seconds. If I got it wrong, pour it out, start over. Pour it out, pour the water out, too much water, 60 seconds every morning. I want everybody to think about that. Every morning, repetition, repetition for six months. I realized that oatmeal, the act of standing at the microwave for 60 seconds every morning was moving me to become the person that I am today, right? I was able to apply the fact that you have to have a bowl, you have to have the right serving of water, milk, or whatever you're going to put in there. You have to have the right amount of oatmeal. What type of bowl will you use? Uh, I used to take my oatmeal on a paper plate and everybody was like, what are you eating? I was like, it's, oat, it's an oat cake at this point. Like, <laughs> I still got to eat it. I made it, you know what I mean? Um, and I applied that to, to everything in life to become more and more and more successful. Um, so that's why oatmeal. And now we just make it cool, right? Uh, my mission in life is to make everything healthy, that, everything that's healthy, cool. Right, so how can we make oatmeal cool? We make a red velvet oatmeal, make a strawberry cheesecake oatmeal. And we introduce that to communities and they're like, well, I don't really eat, who, who all eats oatmeal? All right, who, who doesn't eat oatmeal? Meet me outside, <laughs> how, about, how about that? So we introduce that. So nevertheless, I just wanted to share kind of the beginning, the beginning of Sully. Uh, so let's talk about movement, right? Um, I, I sent Chris a title, and I'm going to share it early. I was, I, was wait, I was thinking about waiting to save it for later, but I feel like the room needs to feel the word movement. Because you can look at it two ways, right? Movement is the act of something changing, right? So we're all moving. We're in motion. Everybody picking up their coffee cup is in motion. We're being here. We had to come move and be in motion. Uh, then you have movements that, that changes people, community, lifestyle. So there's two ways to look at it, and I'm, and I'm gonna give it to you from both sides, right? I'm the king of acronyms, so I'm gonna use the word movement, I'm gonna break it down, and we're gonna have a good time, all right? Uh, before we really get started, everybody has to move. I feel like we all came here either with or we know somebody that we're sitting with. I just wanna shake the room up real quick and get everybody to move to somebody they don't need, need to sit by. 30 seconds, and go. <laughs> You gotta be a disruptor in this in this world. You gotta shake it up, man. Shake it up. Appreciate you coming, brother. Yeah, absolutely. Oops, sorry. sorry brother. Good deal. We call that the Cupid Shuffle, right? Y'all can tell I work in customer service. If it wasn't 80 people in here, we'll stand up here and I'll say, I'm intelligent in, and you got to go next and be like, I'm brilliant, Brandon. We'll go all the way down the line, and then the last person got to say it all the way back. But we'll just keep it cool by switching the room up. All right? Good deal. I'm going to get in trouble. Chris, I'm going, Chris. So movement, right? For me, I think finding out who you are is the best act of movement. I feel, somebody say why, or somebody say wow. Oh, say it, say it again, wow. <laughs> yeah, we can do this all day. But, so for me, I had to take a self-assessment to move, right? I had to look at everything I was stacked against with, right? Pre-diabetes, uh, 
bad credit score, right? Everybody has their own vices. You know, uh, I wasn't an alcoholic, but I, food, food was my addiction. So I had to look at my relationship with food had to be different. My relationship with money had to be different. Um, I live by a standard though. One day at a time, one meal at a time, one workout at a time. I think we all have a big goal that we want to achieve and we forget about the little movements that it takes to get there. Uh, my first goal for this guy was like astronomical. I'm gonna be like 200, I'm gonna do all this, I'm gonna be a male physique model, you know? It didn't, it didn't happen that way. I failed the first time, I, I, I gained weight. Uh, at this point, I've probably seen the barrel of 300 pounds three times, right? So I'm a three time, almost 100 pound champion losing weight. Um, and it was something in me in 2017, I had got comfortable. I got back to Cigna, I'm making good money, I'm eating my oatmeal every morning, but I was still comfortable, right? And I told myself, 2017, you were, I was probably about 289 at this point. I'm just throwing out pounds, right? 289 pounds. And I had to tell myself, you've allowed yourself to stop moving. You got to a place of con contempt, uh, complacency, and you, you felt like you no longer have to move. And there's an impact on that, right? Positive and negative. Positive, in, in, the negative impact is, you're gonna go right back to where you were. The, ne the negative impact is, it's time to move, right? And I say that to say, I had to tell myself, we have to dial in, right? We got to this point, we're somewhat successful, now we have to really move. Um, I created, uh, I was telling, I created a, a brand called, are you working on your abs, right? I'm not gonna ask everybody if they got abs. I know that's a touchy, touchy situation. I've been working on mine since 2016. However, the acronyms are Attitude Breed Success, all right? Uh, everybody made a conscious decision to come out this morning, no matter what you had to face this morning. So that's, a, that's the first choosing, the, the A, the attitude, choosing to move when you really don't want to. Those are the days that count the most. Uh, the Breed Success part is whatever decision that you made that morning or in the moment or that evening or overnight, is gonna breed what you get to re rejoice in in tomorrow, right? So we created that, and I thought I was gonna be this great social media speaker. I was gonna travel the world, I was on my Eric Thomas stuff, and it just didn't work. It didn't work because it went from me living it to forcing it, right? So I shut it down, right? Had a, my last video, I was explaining to everybody, thank y'all for watching my videos, sharing my posts shut it down and I really started embodying the life of, of movement and causing a movement, right? So fast forward, I'm steady on my journey, steady losing weight. It's probably about 2018. Um, I was, in a, I was in, a, in a barber chair and I, this word hit me. I'm gonna talk about that word a bit later. The word was original, right? So I looked at the word original and I applied that to who we are as people, right? Uh, I created a brand, I'm wearing a brand now, it's called Never Accept Less, I got it on. Um, and our slogan is, always be original and never accept less, right? So I put a parentheses around the NAL. And I'm saying this because part of me moving, I had to go through the loss of my dad when I was five years old, moving to Chattanooga. Uh, growing up in a, in a home, single parent home, right? Face against those odds. Self-esteem issues, depression, uh, food addiction. Uh, showing up and, and choosing to be myself and not try to be like my peers. There's nothing's wrong with it. Like we all find inspiration, but I needed to really know who Sully was. He was always inside this guy, always. We just had to bring him out, right? So right now, I'm challenging everybody to dig deep inside yourself. The movement starts inside first, right? Who do you have to become tomorrow? And what work do you have to do today to become that person to move forward, okay? All right, so I'm gonna break down what the word movement means to me. Again, the title, I don't think I shared it. You can't have movement if you don't move yourself. So the M in movement, motivation. Everybody can say it with me. Oh, y'all can get louder than that. We on MLK, come on now. <laughs> motivation. motivation, all right, good deal. So think about what drives you to move um, and what movement 
do you, what calls, what, what is it for? Like what drives you, what motivates you? Uh, I want to second down, I want to double down on the word motivation because I think a lot of us, we see something. This is my guy, Brandon. He's motivating me to put a suit on right now, right? But I have to be, motivation is nothing without discipline, right? So I think we, we, we look at the word motivation, oh, I'm motivated, I'm going to do this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run a marathon. But do you have the discipline to get up and train at 530 in the morning when your whole family is asleep, right? Do you have the discipline to eat right? Do you have the discipline to train, even when it comes to fashion? Do you have the discipline to, to put it on and really do your research and figure it out, right? So I want you guys to think about motivation is nothing without discipline, okay? Let's go with the O, my favorite word, original. That's y'all time. That, that's y'all time. After I said it, y'all said it, all right? Let's go. Original. original. Show up as your true self. That's, that's all you have to do. Right. It's uncomfortable. It's real uncomfortable. I, I, the whole week I sat at home, I said, what am I going to wear to this speech? Like, what, what, what should I put on? I, am I going to get there? Somebody going to be dressed this way, that way? I, I, do I want to put a blade on? Do I want to put a, a flannel on? I'm glad I didn't. It's hot in here. I don't know about y'all. It's not just the lights. But I said, what am I going to do? And I woke up like yesterday. I was like, just show up. Just just show up. And if you show up authentic, you show up as you, that's where the, the energy will flow from, all right? So we got motivation and we got original. The V is value. My man, Brandon, one and only. We're going to say it one more time, value. I think this is, when we come to rooms like this and we're networking and we're, we're getting to know each other, I think the word value is a lost art when it comes to movement because Networking for most people looks like, how can we make money? How can we do this? How can we do that? But networking is really about adding value. Movements are about adding value, right? So when you look out, when you go into other rooms, look at yourself and say, how can I add value to this room? And everybody's value may look different. My value may look like putting up chairs after I get done, after I get done speaking. If they need help putting up chairs, they put up chairs. I may have to stop at the door. Uh, so find every morning, I, I look to see what value I can add to my community, to my world, to my family, and to myself as well, too. All right? Next word. Everybody ready? Yes. Come on, Mary. Energy. Energy. I believe that energy is contagious. I believe that you can choose to have good energy or bad energy. It's all a decision. Um, but when you have a, a room like this, so much energy is flowing from the creative aspect uh, we have painters, we have photographers, we have writers, we have speakers, dancers, marathon runners, oatmeal makers. Like, I want to throw that in there just because that's what I do. Um, but it's a choice, really, to have good energy, right? And how are you energizing others? Uh, I like to do it with my smile. I knew very early that I wasn't going to make it to the NFL, even though that was my dream. Uh, I didn't exceed 5'8". It didn't work for me. I wasn't the fastest guy. Um, I didn't, I wasn't tall either, so I know I wasn't going to, and I haven't grown a beard yet, so I knew I, I wasn't going to make it in the model industry. Uh, but my energy is what, what drives people to be around me, and, and it's infectious, all right? Next. Ready, Mary? M, message. message. You have to find what your message is, right? I define my message to all of my initiatives as how can we, my message is how can we be healthy, right? Is it physical? Is it mental? Is it spiritual? How can we be healthy? And that's how I spark movements like the Daddy and Me play date, right? We had 150 people come out. Dads get to spend time with their kids. They don't have to worry about buying food. They don't have to worry about anything. We just spend time with people. I'm big on healthy dads, specifically in the black community. I love all healthy dads, but specifically in the black community where there is a notion that we are not present in our children's life. Uh, so that initiative is to show we can get 150 dads and kids in the room and show the world, not only show them, but show kids that they have their own networks. I think it's important for my kids, can, they can come in this room right now if they weren't in school and work the room because I was putting them around different people, all right? Uh, so find your message, find your message in your movement, okay? Let's go. The next E. You ready, ain't you? Next E is empower. empower. 
Say it again. I like that word. Empower. Empower. How do we empower people? How do you empower, empower a movement, right? Uh, we put gas in our cars. We make sure our phone is charged up. That's powering. That's empowering us to get to and from. But whatever initiative and movement that you're a part of, how do you empower people? And it's, it's going to suck some days, right? Some days you just don't have the energy to empower. It's going to suck some days, but you have to figure out what you can do to empower people. All right? I'm almost there. The next word is negativity. negativity. All movements, either if you're moving forward, a car moving, if you don't stop on time, that's a negative force, it's going to cause a wreck. If you spark a movement, you're going to have some form of negativity, right? Uh, it, it's disruptive. Anything that any movement can be disruptive. If, if somebody got up right now and started running around this room, everybody's going to be like, I'm not going to run. Everybody's looking at me to do it. I'm not, I'm, I'm not that guy, not today. But negativity, we have to face negativity. How do, how, how do we do that? I think we put everything in order that I've said today. Showing up at the best version of yourself is how we overcome negativity, we overcome adversity, and we can move forward, all right? The last one is T, and that word is today. today. Y'all don't sound too positive about today. It's a creative morning. Today. 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 So whatever movement that you want to start or whatever way you need to move, it starts today, right? You made it out to bed this morning. You got another set of 24 hours. You get to be around beautiful people. Make sure you get to know everyone in the room if you can. Uh, my name is Sully, by the way. I don't know if I introduced myself as Sully. So today, it starts today, right? Disrupt today. Think about the initial things of, and, and what drives us for today. Uh, I see my guy Wiley in the room, and every morning his, his saying is, welcome to the day, right? Uh, and that, that's so powerful because you get the opportunity to really seize today um, and enjoy, enjoy the moment, okay? That's my time. Uh, I really recommend everybody to go get some famous oatmeal from the Oatmeal Experience. Um, I'm also, I want to invite everybody to come running with me next Monday morning at 7 a.m. That's the pressure cook I wanted to put y'all in. Um, next month, I'm starting running every day until I feel like I've earned my right as a runner. And what I want to do is impact community through running, um, impact culture through running, and impact kids through running. So I'm building my running resume. That way I can present it to whoever I need to present it to and change lives through running. There's 2% of African-American runners in major marathons. 2%. So what I want us to do is teach our kids in the African-American community that they can be healthy without dribbling the ball, run, playing football, or rapping but they can save their life. Uh, one thing that I've learned through running is that you train for a marathon. It's like six to eight months of training. You get to see the trees change, you get to see the environment change. It's sunny some days, it's 30 degrees some days. And I feel like kids in the community, don't, they don't get to see that through that lens. So that is my mission moving forward, all right? Thank everybody for the time. Get to know somebody today. Y'all have a great day.